everyone, and welcome to Empowering Homeschool Conversations. My name is Peggy Ployer, and I'm the host of this weekly broadcast put on by Sped Homeschool, as well as its founder and CEO. Um, we at Sped Homeschool empower families to home educate children with learning challenges. And I just encourage you to check out our website at spedhomeschool.com to learn more about the resources that we offer families, including this broadcast and a whole lot more of other things that you'll find on our website. Um, I am super excited today to um, to introduce you to my guest, Terry McKee. Terry, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, so we are kicking off a, a new topic because every month we focus on a different topic. We just finished up school choice last month. Um, and this month we are focusing on homeschooling amidst medical issues, <laughs> a variety. And that is exactly what the title is of our show today, because um, Terry's going to bring in a, a mix of a whole lot of things that um, God has brought her family in and through, and she has a lot of wisdom to share. So Terry, thank you so much for being with us and just being willing to be open and to share with us um, just some encouragement as well as wisdom. It's my pleasure. Yeah. So just to, to get kicked off, I want uh, our audience to know that we are live for a reason because we would love for you to be part of this conversation as well. So whether you're watching on Facebook or on YouTube, just know that if you make comments in the the feed, that we would love to include you in this conversation. Of course, um, I, I would love for them to be to be helpful comments. Um, sometimes we get spammers on and I, I try to take care of that. Um, but, but we want, um, we do this live because we know that a lot of times it's really hard to get an interactive conversation when you have children who struggle. Um, a lot of times the world we live in does not understand our families and we are a, a safe place. And so mm -hmm. just know that, um, but wherever you're coming from, we'd love to have you um, put in the feed where you're watching from. I said last week I was in Jacksonville Beach um, in Jacksonville, Florida. I'm back in Houston now, so <laughs> glad to be back in my house instead of my trailer broadcasting. And um, and Terry, you are you live where? In uh, Estonia, North Carolina, which is That's outside of Charlotte. Great. Yes. So technology is bringing us together and we'd love for you to be part of our conversation as well. Um, so so make sure you take advantage of that if you're watching live. And um, if you're joining us on a recorded feed, we would love for you to join us sometime. Just know that our normal broadcast is on Tuesdays um, from 1230 to 1.30 um, Central Time. So, um, so you'll always catch us then. But um, so, so yeah, so Terry, we're talking about homeschooling amidst medical issues. And I would love for our audience just to get to know you a little bit. Sure. And so if you could just tell us a little bit, bit about you and your homeschooling journey and then sure. about your website, Homeschooling One Child, and how that came about as well. Sure. Um, well, I am married with four children. It's a blended family. Uh, his mom... I get this all mixed up every time, but the two oldest are mine biologically from a, okay. my previous marriage. And then uh, we have his daughter biologically, which is the third child. Mm -hmm. And then we have one together um, who is turning 12 in April. Wow. Um, the time flies. And yes. so, um, the oldest three are either married or, and, or out of the house. Mm. So, we're just, we're, la we're left with our baby. And mm -hmm. um, the oldest three went through um, the public school system. So, and the oldest is, um, has autism, okay. epilepsy, um, bipolar disorder, mm -hmm. ADHD, intellectual disability. Mm -hmm. And he lives out of the house in his own little apartment um, for the That's disabled awesome. adults, him and his cat. Mm -hmm. Um the cat is very important because she gives him something to take care of. Uh, and yes. she she's a calico, which means she talks all the time. Uh -huh. <laughs> and she really keeps him on his toes. And she mm. wakes him up all the time when he takes a nap. So she's a support <laughs> cat, if there is mm. such a thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never, one never knows if cats are willing to be a support animal. But, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I think they do out of necessity sometimes because they just need the attention. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. 
<laughs> Absolutely. But um, homeschooling one child came about because we um, we decided to homeschool our last child at home, mm-hmm. Laura, um, our baby, um, who's not such a baby anymore. But mm. <laughs> we we decided in um, I think it was July of 2015 to homeschool her from kindergarten on up. Okay. And so we started with the best of intentions in August, <laughs> August 1st and homeschooling her in kindergarten. And it was a delight. Mm. Um, it was an absolute delight. And then, and I'll get more into this later, a little bit later, but, um, and that November of 2015, our lives took a drastic turn. Mm. And we decided that at that time, that life was just too hard mm. to add homeschool on top of it um, with everything that we had going on, medically speaking. Yeah. So we decided to put her into um, public school. And we found out that because of a lot of different things, she we discovered she has dis, has dyslexia. Mm. And... She also has chronic migraines and um, ADHD. Mm. So we're a family of special needs. Um, Mm -hmm. Between our oldest who has autism and a whole whole host of things, to my second son, he has ADHD. And then my third daughter or my oldest daughter, my third child, um, we don't do the half step thing. Yeah, yeah. They're your Um, kids. Mm -hmm. They're my kids, you know. And so my oldest daughter, she has juvenile diabetes. And Mm. so I've been taking care of her since she was 15 months old. So Mm -hmm. I was her babysitter Mm -hmm. before I was her stepmom. And, yeah, she likes to throw that out. And Mm -hmm. (laughs) my my dad married my my nanny. And I'm like, you know, let's let's not go this route. (laughs) Let's don't do that. No, 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 no. And so we got started homeschooling um, this one child. And most, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of my homeschooling friends have multiple children. Right. Yes. You know, it's, they, it's, have it's a, the, they have the 15 the culture. Yeah. Band, yeah. Know, yes, and, exactly. And, and all the goats and everything. And, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> you know, they oh, have that makes me a laugh. <laughs> Right. And we um I just had the one. So I felt like out of out of touch with the homeschool reality, you know. Mm. But <laughs> I discovered in searching for homeschooling material and ideas and encouragement mm-hmm. that there was very little on homeschooling just one child. Yeah. Um it was the you know, we both have a lot of blogger friends and mm-hmm. and they're geared toward homeschooling multiple children. Right. And um, the resources I was finding was for multiple ages, multiple children, et cetera, mm-hmm. and not just for the, the difficulties and the challenges and the opportunities mm-hmm. of homeschooling just one. Right. So um, when I was at um, a two-to-one conference... That's where we uh, met. That's where we met. Mm-hmm. And um, I was at a two to one conference and the Lord just really, I had a blog at the time. Um, it was for Christian encouragement. Hmm. And honestly, um, to be very frank, monetizing a Christian encouragement blog is not successful at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I felt like um, even though I was doing the Lord's work and encouraging people and reaching people in um, Russia and China with the gospel mm. and Africa, um, and people were coming to know Jesus, that's not, the Lord was laying something else on my heart. Mm. And that was to homeschool um to, I mean, to provide resources and help and encouragement right. to parents homeschooling just one. Hmm. So at two to one, um, I was talking with some friends and I said, you know, I'm thinking about this blog hmm. and um, about homeschooling one child. And 
um, the feedback I got was just incredible. You know, there, mm. that would make it, that would be great for SEO. That would be all the technical jargon and, <laughs> you know, and they like, you can monetize that. You can do incredible things with that. Mm. So, um, that night I went upstairs after w- that session ended and, um, <laughs> hopped on my site, my, um, I use Weebly. I don't use WordPress or anything, mm-hmm. but, um, hopped on Weebly and bought homeschoolingonechild.com. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, it's going to be live in two hours. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> and, um, so I went back downstairs the next morning and told my friend who I was talking with, I'm like, it's live. It's not set up yet, but I have the domain. And, mm-hmm. um, after that, it's just, it's been a roller coaster of faith mm. and grace and um, the Lord's favor mm. and just making things happen for parents who are homeschooling a single child or an only child. Mm-hmm. Um, or because of my special needs background with children with special needs, yeah, I say that um, homeschooling is, is the ultimate individualized educational plan. Mm-hmm. So even though it homeschooling one child is tailored toward singletons, mm-hmm. you know, when we homeschool a special needs child, no matter how many children we have, we still have to homeschool one child. Right. That is so because true. Mm-hmm. We have to tailor to that. And even if a child doesn't have special needs per se, like autism or dyslexia or whatever, mm-hmm. that, um, you know, say a child is gifted that's still a special need. Yeah, exactly. And, and if a child doesn't have anything related to special needs, they still have to have an individualized educational plan for them for themselves. So, mm-hmm. yeah, um, yeah. And the popularity so right now, you know, when I, I looked at some of, or I was hearing some statistics, there's, mm-hmm. there's so many parents that are choosing to just like parent teach one child, maybe yes. online teach another child, send another child to private school, one in public school. It's like they're making all the options at the same time. And so so yeah. a lot of people fit in every category now. They aren't just in one. Absolutely. <laughs> and so and so easily they could be homeschooling one child and still absolutely. have multiple kids. Um, I was thrilled one the other night when I went to bed and I was, you know, on my phone playing my online game, as you do. <laughs> And I got this message popped up and it was um, from a new subscriber. Um, she had liked my Facebook page um, that's for homeschooling one child. And she said, is this just for singletons? Like mm-hmm. if I'm homeschooling and only? I said, yes. And she said, I've been looking everywhere for something like this. Thank you mm-hmm. so much. And I was like, she said, it's an answer to prayer. And Mm. that just thrilled me to no end because that is exactly why God led me to do that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We just don't know where, where it's going to go. I mean, no, I bought (laughs) spedhomeschool.com way before sped homeschool was sped homeschool. That's a long (laughs) story and I'm not going into it, but, um, but yeah. And yeah. God just kept increasing that desire to do something with it. So absolutely, he just he just don't know. But it's obedience, you know. You just obedience. don't know what yep. where that obedience is going to take you. So yeah, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. That um, I just hope that's an encouragement to many of you. If you're feeling like you need to step out, do something, maybe just make a new friend. Um, you absolutely. know, you, you just don't know where that's going to go and grow from. And mm-hmm. yeah. So, so, you know, as we dive into this, this issue of homeschooling amidst medical issues, how has your life in homeschooling been impacted by medical issues? If you want to just, sure. um, well, dive in. <laughs> yeah, I'll dive in. Um, like I said, you know, all my children have varying degrees of special mm-hmm. needs that has been from the very beginning. My daughter, Laura, who I homeschool, she's Mm -hmm. almost 12 years old. She was diagnosed at four years old with chronic migraines. Wow. And if you've you've never had a migraine, count yourself very fortunate. Mm. If you've 
have migraines, just imagine a four-year-old getting those. Wow. And, you know, she has spent many a night in the hospital, hospitalized to get those mm-hmm. down. Um, and when she was, um, when she was little, she was having a lot of them mm-hmm. and it really became debilitating. Wow. But when we were homeschooling her um, in kindergarten, we um, would take, she would have a migraine day maybe once a month. Mm -hmm. Um, Normally chronic migraines for adults, you're having like more than 15 a month. Wow. But for a child of that age, you know, one or two a month, that's chronic. Mm -hmm. Um, But because four-year-olds are not supposed to get migraines. They're not right, exactly. I mean, my goodness. But um, I'm pulling on my thing. It's going to come out of my ear and fly in and kill a cat or something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but the year that we were homeschooling Laura in kindergarten, we went to um, my in-law's house at the time in Lynchburg, Virginia for Thanksgiving. Hmm. And we were getting ready to come back and we had my little girl Laura and my son my my youngest son Jacob the one just just has ADHD um, <laughs> <laughs> um and he was home from his um he was in college at Western Carolina at the time so he was home mm-hmm. on you know Thanksgiving break mm-hmm. and my husband Greg and the it was just the four of us my um oldest son was with his grandparents at Thanksgiving. That's his thing. He likes to go there for oh, uh-huh. his um, dad's parents. And my um, oldest daughter was in Ohio, in Ohio with his, with her mother. Um, so we kind of had a split family situation. Mm-hmm. But we were coming back from Lynchburg um, Saturday night because we wanted to go to church on Sunday mm. at our church. And... Um, we stopped and had dinner and all of us had a lot of sweet tea and I'm in the South. So we drink sweet tea. Uh (laughs) And so all of us had a lot of sweet tea. And by the time we got two hours down the road and we were about an hour away from home, Mm. it was at that point where we could not make it home. (laughs) You know I understand that. We were just on the road for a week. Yeah, yeah I get it. <laughs> and so we we stopped at a at a rest area in um, a town north of Charlotte called Concord. Mm. And um, your um, people up north would call it Concord. We don't do that here in the south. <laughs> right. We have to enunciate every syllable just to make sure we say it correctly. <laughs> right. Concord. Um, not conquered. Um, but we stopped there to go to the bathroom and we stopped at a rest area and the four of us walked in. Um, they had two buildings, one, which is very important. One was for the vending machine area Mm. and the other one was for the restrooms. Hmm. And we were walking toward the restrooms because obviously, and (laughs) And but we noticed as fast as you could. <laughs> yeah, like, no, let's go, let's go. And we noticed that there were two guys waiting at the doors, um, and they were both smoking cigarettes and stuff, and just hanging out, which is not unusual at rest areas. Mm-hmm. You know, you get truck drivers and everything just wanting to stretch their legs, right? Whatever, and or just normal travelers. But it was like eight o'clock at night. Mm-hmm. We. But the four of us and those two guys were the only ones there. And and the uh, the maintenance man, the janitor, was there inside. Well, we all do our business. But my, my Greg, that's funny, my husband, Greg, um, he was not to be weird and gross or anything, but he was regular. Let's just say that. And it was that time. And so Jacob came out of the bathroom, as did Laura and I. And Laura was six years old, at the, five years old at this point. And we, um, I looked at my watch and I was like, oh, great. We're going to be a while. And mm. we walked outside to let Laura 
run around. You know, you're traveling with a five-year-old mm-hmm. who, who has ADHD and she's hyper and everything. Oh, yeah. And, I remember yeah. the days. Yes. <laughs> and so I just, Jacob was chasing her around mm-hmm. the outside in the courtyard. And um, I was watching them, but I was facing the two guys just because I was. It just happened that I was in that beeline watch. You know, I could look at them. Well, I noticed that they were sizing up my son. Mm. They were looking at him very intently and looking at us. And then they looked at each other and threw the cigarettes down and walked inside. And at the time, I didn't think anything about it. You know, maybe Mm. I didn't even, you know, you don't question someone's purpose or what right. they, why they're yeah. doing. Mm-hmm. But not 30 seconds later, we hear um, bam and a gunshot. And those two guys ran out and they were sliding glass doors. They ran out. And when they ran out and opened the doors, um, I could hear my husband screaming, help me, help me. Oh, no. And I ran... Jacob and Laura and I ran inside um, and there was my husband in the, um, in the men's restroom on the floor on his face. Mm -hmm. And he had been shot in the back. And those two guys who he, they went into the men's bathroom, Greg had been washing his hands and they put a gun to his head and he just bolted to run. Hmm. And when he got three feet away, they shot. And the police said at the time, or not at the time, but during the trial, that it was a kill shot. It mm. was, he he's supposed to be dead. Oh. But God, in his infinite mercy, he, even though that man fired, you know, pulled the trigger and fired the shot, God placed the bullet Hmm. because it actually wedged into his T12 vertebrae and Hmm. welded in his T12 vertebrae to the point that it cannot never be removed. It's still in there. Wow. But half inch in any direction and it would have gone through his abdomen and been Hmm. three feet away. It would have killed him instantly. Hmm. And so... It it ended up being um, he's it was this whole big manhunt everything, but Greg ended up having to go to the hospital obviously, um, mm-hmm. and he's paralyzed. That happened mm-hmm. in Thanksgiving of 2015, and he's um, he was instantly paralyzed. He had blood mm-hmm. coming from his nose because he. When he was shot, he fell with such force because his mm. legs were immediately, the, the spinal cord was immediately severed. Wow. And he fell through that he still has the imprint of the tile on his face. Mm. And so he broke his nose and blood and everything. But, hmm. um, you know, he never lost consciousness, which is such a God thing. Because hmm. before, when he would cut his finger, you know, I he had 30 seconds before he was passed out. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, if he, he cut his finger on a table saw once, just nicked it, hmm. ran inside, sat on the toilet. He said, I'm out. And he was out. Oh, wow. And I mean, but this time, God strengthened him and he never mm. lost consciousness even though he was staring at his you know blood mm. and so that he could give a correct id to the police officers about those two men who he wow. saw face to face so one man was caught within three days and the other man was caught um like three weeks later mm. um but they were um gang members and just wanting to score some drug money. But the thing is, they never took anything out of his wallet. They never took his wallet out of his pants. I did that. Mm. Um, and But the only thing he had in his wallet was his quarter for Aldi. 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the shopping carts were all uh-huh. the only thing he had. And um, some credit cards, but that was it. Mm. But they never took that. They just shot him and ran. Mm. So, um, it, but that that incident, um, yeah, he was in the hospital for, he came home December 23rd. So we only had like a day or two to get ready for Christmas. Right. But our church had come in after the shooting and blessed us. God just, mm. God just really took us and his, showed us his power and presence mm. and peace by um, our, there was a GoFundMe account and our church renovated our house to make it re- wheelchair accessible. Wow. And made um, widened doors, uh, put in a handicapped um, bathroom for renovated mm-hmm. our master bath, which was, you know, it's funny because it, God only always takes the things we hate, you know, <laughs> yeah. and then turns them around and uses them to yeah. the, our good. Mm. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, my, our bathroom before the shooting, you walk in and there's like these two closets on the side, two tiny <laughs> closets on mm-hmm. the side. And you walk in and there's hub sink and toilet and not like a double sink it was just a single Mm -hmm. sink and tiny master bathroom i mean Mm -hmm. the house was built in 86 when apparently large master baths weren't a thing (laughs) but you know but god took this bathroom that and the closet situation that i absolutely hated with a passion because there were no doors Mm. on the bathroom so you lay in bed and you see everything that's going on, whether you want to or not. <laughs> and you walk past your clothes, whether you want to or not. But God brought in this, um, a, a friend of the one of the pastors who's over the project. And it was so amazing. He, he said, okay, take these closets out. Where this closet is on this right-hand side you put the toilet there with grab bars and stuff. Mm. Sink, handicap accessible sink on this in this closet. Mm. And this whole bathroom, take the tub, take the toilet out, take the sink out, and that's a shower room. Oh wow. So our bathroom became like what was originally the three piece bath became a, a two header shower room. Mm. And God just did incredible things. Hmm. It was like that the whole time. But because of what we thought Greg would have incredible needs, and he hmm. was out for out of work for 100 days. Wow. But then he went back to work. Thank God, praise the Lord, passed the plate. Hmm. I mean, he had hmm. to go back to work. I, I was at the point with him. We love each other, but there's only so much, you know, we can... <laughs> Right. Yes. But being in the same confining spot, and um, I, I said, "You're going back to work today. I'm driving you. (laughs) (laughs) I'm driving to Charlotte and driving back." And I mean, it was a thing. It was, Hmm. and then he, um, he figured out hand controls for Hmm. a car, and we, he got a car with the GoFundMe, and um, we put hand controls in it so he could drive himself to work. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the time we, we actually took the advice of some well-meaning friends who thought that we could not homeschool and help mm-hmm. Greg at the same time. Looking back on it, I wish I had just stuck to my guns. Really? And so we put her, put Laura into public school mm-hmm. and she was in public school for the rest of the kindergarten year and first and second grade. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was very eye-opening to me because um, even though she had an IEP, it was just not being followed. Yeah, that's the, usually the case, unfortunately. And, yeah. mm-hmm. and I felt, and she was, they said she's in, at the end of the second grade year, they said, well, she's reading the kindergarten level. She's never going to progress. Mm-hmm. But she was, um, what I realized at the time was she was dealing with trauma oh yes everything Mm -hmm. that she was going through 
um, was trauma based. Mm-hmm. So I started reading about trauma based education, mm-hmm. and everything that she was experiencing was due to the trauma of seeing her daddy shot, and right. she thought he was dead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, because she was right there in the midst of it. Mm-hmm. So we pulled her out at the end of second grade. And um, mm-hmm. I remember at her IEP meeting, the last one, and they said, well, we need you to sign these IEP papers. I was like, you know, there's no need. Because mm-hmm. I'm going to homeschool her. I'm bringing her back home. And they said, you can't do that. She has oh, you were needs. you got one of those responses. <laughs> we like, talked about that a couple months yeah. ago. Yes. So tell us how you answered yeah. that. <laughs> and I said, no. I said, she's my child. She's not mm. your child. You did not birth her. You did not, you know, she's not your child. She's not your responsibility. Mm. I said, I have, I have to answer to God for her, not you. Yeah. Mm. And so we just said, here is our... Um, homeschool identification paper that had her name on it and mm-hmm. our homeschool number and said, that's all you need. This is her withdrawal. Mm-hmm. And we pulled her out and I worked with her heavily mm-hmm. on reading specifically. And by December of third grade, she was reading on grade level. Yeah. So all she needed, but, but Peggy, she was having at the during second grade, she was having 28 migraines. A oh, month. wow. They had increased that much. They had increased that much. So she missed, she would miss 28 days. Hmm. Not a month. I'm sorry. Uh, for that a year, 28 days a year of migraine days. But she was hmm. having multiple, multiple migraines every month. And they were last right. days. Oh, wow. And it was, um, it was heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. But, um, right. and the school just gives them days off, right? There's nothing right. that they, they try to do to, to help them no. with doing stuff at home. No, yeah. absolutely not. I told them, cause one of her triggers is, um, sunlight. Oh, okay. And, and I said, you know, she has to wear these sunglasses during recess and, they would say, well, um, the other kids don't have sunglasses, so she can't be privileged like that. And I'm like, hmm. no, it's in her IEP. Right. And huh. somehow, you know, the sunglasses would just not make it outside. <laughs> so hmm. it was it was one of those things. Um, plus, Laura has this incredibly active imagination. <laughs> And she um, she was in heavily involved in the imagination of dinosaurs. Hmm. And so she got into so much trouble because she was making r- games up on recess that was called Raptor Tag. Hmm. And where she would chase kids, but she was the T-Rex and they were <laughs> plant eaters and she would have to bite them. Oh, and- no. One day she actually, you know, like drew blood. Oh. And I got the call. I was like, this is the call I never thought I'd pay. Right. <laughs> and Laura explained herself by saying, well, she's a, she's an omnivore. I'm a carnivore. That's what we do. Oh. I'm like, no, you're so homeschooled. You're so yeah. Homeschooled. <laughs> oh, you know, you can eat whatever you want, but not people. Yeah. <laughs> oh. But medically speaking, you know, we, we were faced with so many things mm-hmm. that we were faced with caregiving for my husband. At the time, um, Jacob, when the shooting happened, Jacob left school and came oh, home. Well, yeah. Because he was dealing with trauma. Mm-hmm. So he moved back in. Sam had been at a group home, um, but then... A year after the shooting, he there was abuse at the group home, so we pulled him oh. out, and he came back home. Hmm. And so, you always think they're leaving permanently, and then they come know? back. They I come know. <laughs> now Jacob is married and lives in a camper, but on property. Mm-hmm. So there, he's kind of back, but um, 
medically speaking, you know, we were, we were dealing with so much. Mm. Um, it wasn't just one person. It was, right. it was our whole family. Plus I was taking care of my elderly mother at the time who mm. passed on, but homeschool allowed us the flexibility to um, mm. not have to worry about getting her up at 7 a.m. or 6.30 a.m. to meet the bus. Right. Yeah. Being and on somebody because, else's schedule. Mm-hmm. And homeschool allowed us to um, take breaks when we needed to mm. and go to doctor appointments without fear of, you know, that note. You have to have the note. And right. um, medically speaking, we we incorporated all the medical stuff into homeschool. Hmm. You know, Laura learned very early yeah. how to take blood pressure. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And so she has been saying now for years that she wants to be a doctor. Mm. But she wants to be a doctor to get the bullet out of daddy's back. Oh. And, you know, it makes you cry just thinking mm. about it. But... Medical stuff has been with us um, and and developmental stuff, Mm -hmm. developmentally speaking, um, with intellectual disability, autism, everything. Mm -hmm. And we've learned how, like when Greg was in the hospital, we said, um, well, we know how to deal with this because we have to be on a structure with Sam, our one with autism. Mm -hmm. So we can be on a structure with your paralysis hmm. and your your needs. So it really helped us translate mm-hmm. the skill sets, you know, transfer the skill sets that we've learned with one to another. Right. And yeah. so we've we've incorporated those skill sets into the homeschool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, because that's at, a great in our point. home, it's life skills. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like taking care of dad, Laura's dad, mm-hmm. it's, it's a life skill situation. But now mm-hmm. he, um, he's now it's five years. Um, he's been playing uh, wheelchair basketball. Oh, okay. And for the um, Charlotte Rolling Hornets. And he's um, now a starter for them. Hmm. And when I'm speaking at, the uh, Teach Them Diligently conference in Texas mm-hmm. at the end of March, he's going to be in Kansas at um, the National Wheelchair Basketball Championship. Wow. So <laughs> we're just going that yeah. way. Um, well, but it's, it's just, um, you know, there, there are lots of positive and negative things mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. With um, having so many medical needs, but right. incorporating them in homeschool, it makes it more normal. That's a really good point. Yes, because that that is it's it's the foundation from mm-hmm. that everybody's living, right? And exactly. and there it's not obscure that yes, we have to take care of this medical need and then do this this assignment and. Yeah. Um, and that's how life is anyways. We, yeah. we don't live segmented from our disability. No. Our disability is with us. Absolutely. And, um, and the, the, that's a great point to, to just even, you know, promote homeschooling, yes. especially for kids with struggles and um, disabilities, because we can normalize their lives Absolutely. so much more instead of society saying, well, this is how you're different. And this is how we're going to label you. And we have to work around you because it's different than what we do, where, you know, within your home, this is the norm. This is what we do. I is one of my pet peeves is saying that, um, oh, my son, I have, um, I have an ADHD son Mm -hmm. or my son, I have an autistic son. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like saying I have a Brown haired mom, right? <laughs> or gray haired mom, depending on the night. But um, you know, it's it, when you say when you say, "Well, my son is autistic," that becomes a part of him. Instead, 
What mm-hmm. I've always done is say my son it has autism mm-hmm. or my son has ADHD. Mm-hmm. It's something that they have that they're working through. Mm-hmm. It's not them. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like it's like saying I am. I was going to say I am tall, but I am tall. You are tall. <laughs> I know because I'm short and I'm stood next to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like saying, like if I if I'm a um, if I like to read books, you know that's like mm-hmm. saying Terry is a book. No, yeah. Terry has books. Mm-hmm. But Terry's not a book. And there you have a whole variety of books to choose from, and yes. one book is not like the other. Yes, no. yeah, that's a very good illustration. Yeah, yeah. I always say, well, we're just in our house. We're all on the spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, we'll find us somewhere point. in there. <laughs> That's a great point, Peggy, because when you have a household that has special needs, mm-hmm. it's it makes it run more efficiently and effectively if the whole household can get on that same yeah. spectrum schedule. Mm-hmm. You yes. know, if everyone knows what's going on, you know, every night we know that between this this time and this time, Greg is taking care of his bowel movement, bowel program, you know, and they call it in the hospital a bowel program. Hmm. Well, to us, you know, on the outside, you know, where's Greg at if someone comes to the door? You know, where's Greg? Mm-hmm. Oh, he's he's busy. What's he doing? He's bowel program. You know? <laughs> right. And it, and it doesn't sound, it sounds weird, mm-hmm. but... When you normalize it, mm-hmm. you know, exactly. it just becomes part of the family. Like mm-hmm. for my son, Sam, when he lived here, you know, when he would have, he had this thing about um, straw wrappers, like it, mm. and he, he would freak out, like have a full on meltdown if he had touched a straw wrapper. Hmm. Because it was trash, and he hates trash. Oh, ironically, yeah. his apartment is never clean. Yeah, that's always interesting. Yes, so, yes. <laughs> and it's that oddity. But he doesn't have any straw wrappers. He doesn't use straws at all hmm. because of the fear of straw wrappers. And but when he was at here, you know, we knew that if there was a straw wrapper, if there was a straw brought into the house, mm-hmm. the straw wrapper needed to go in the trash period Mm. just one it's trash Mm. it is trash two to minimize those meltdowns right you want to accommodate the people within the house when you know their needs Mm -hmm. yes and when when we know those those triggers Mm -hmm. and we need to you know do something about them yeah yeah you know not antagonize Mm -hmm. them Yes, exactly. Or say, why don't you just get on the program and be like everybody else? Well, right. This or is, deal with it. Come right. On. Yeah. I mean, there's sometimes I told my kids that, but it wasn't something yeah, that they I, were struggling with. Yeah. You know, right. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I got a question for you. You know, when your daughter was is dealing with migraines, I'm assuming that that is still an issue. Um, yes. But she only has like one or two a month and they're hormonal. Now. Okay. So, or, yeah. or when she gets very stressed. Mm. Mm-hmm. And so, usually, you know, some of the triggers that I know the triggers like, yeah. um, um, nitrates and lunch meat. Oh, well, so, well that's going to set off a lot of things with a lot of people. Yes. Yes. And that I have migraines, mm. a lot of migraines, but one of my triggers is also nitrates. Mm. So that and sunlight. So we share some triggers Mm-hmm. So, you know, yeah. a lot of room darkening curtains mm-hmm. um, and watch what we eat, uh-huh. you yeah. know, and, and not just not bring it in the house. Right. Yeah. And so yeah. when they do happen, what, what do you modify for school? Um, how does that, that look if well, she if has she a migraine? With a Come on. Migraine, we, um, she one does not want to be where there's any light. Mm-hmm. or noise so we just take an off day yeah i mean we mm-hmm. you know i can't function with a migraine right so yeah. why should i expect her to mm. so you know she gets she gets a buy that day 
mm-hmm. you know, but, and we just take it up what we, you know, s- scheduling, homeschool scheduling is the hardest thing for me at the beginning <laughs> of the year. I set out with great intentions of scheduling, <laughs> of planning it all out. Oh, you know, oh yeah. I, do. I used to do that. Yeah. And <laughs> like, and no, I can't do this. Mm-hmm. I, you know, so we just, because of the, if she has a migraine between, you know, during the Revolutionary War, mm-hmm. <laughs> then what are we going to do? We're going to just, you know, we're going to just pause. Right. And then have a day. They can battle it out later. And then, mm-hmm. we're, you know, they can continue on the next day. Right. But um, and a lot of times my, my oldest son, Sam, who's, you know, he's moved out, but he needs me on occasion to take him grocery mm-hmm. shopping. He mm-hmm. doesn't drive. Um, and he has um, appointments that he has to go to. Mm-hmm. So we have mastered um, road schooling. Ah, and yes. We have um, in my van, we have this DVD thing that comes mm-hmm. up, you know, and <laughs> um, I'll put in a DVD for Laura or a, um, um, Audio books, audio books, yes, on CDs, mm-hmm. and we listen to them. Mm-hmm. You know, it's invaluable. You can do a whole lot of homeschooling in vans or vehicles, right? Mm-hmm. And you know, I've been known to take um, a clipboard of her worksheets and mm-hmm. to waiting rooms. Oh yeah, work on it there mm-hmm. and just get the work done. I don't care where or how. I mm-hmm. care how a little bit, but yeah. where, you know, if you want to do your homeschool work on the couch, that's fine. My recliner, that's fine. Unless I want to walk, sit in it, mm-hmm. the table, you know, and if you want to be in your pajamas, fine. Mm-hmm. You know, I just, I want, there's so many ways to learn. Yeah. I'm not going to limit her ability to learn because of legalistic stuff. Mm, that's good. Yeah. yeah. And our, our kids need that flexibility more so than than more of their typical peers. And it's good for them to know this is how I learn best. I mean, we got one of those sit stand desks for our son mm-hmm. and because of his back issues, he can't sit all the time and he right. can't stand all the time. So mm-hmm. he's constantly moving up and down and up and down. And so you hear this crank going and but yeah. it works. Mm-hmm. And And if we were to say, well, you know, working looks like this and that's how you have to do it. It would just be miserable. Absolutely. I mean, when Laura was in the public school for those two and a half years, you know, she had to sit at a desk, not move. Mm -hmm. She could not talk to other people. Um, And then they worry about us socializing as homeschoolers. (laughs) You know, but now when we go to a park, we have play dates when Mm -hmm. it's warm. Um, Right. You know, you can't do a play date when it's 20 degrees outside, but yeah, it's hard. Well, you could. I we, we lived in Minnesota. That was six months out of the year, so we made it work. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a little difficult here because we're not prepared for it here right. in North Carolina. Mm-hmm. We just don't have the jacket situation going on. Right. But um, when we do have play dates, you know, this unsocialized homeschooler is the one you know <laughs> gathering up the kids and making right. games of tag and I'll yell you know no raptor tag yeah right no, no <laughs> raptor tag no no dinosaur stuff and <laughs> she's um she's the one coordinating you know kids playing with one another and making sure mm. that the kids that that are hanging on the outside are pulled in to the group mm. You know, yeah. and it's pretty special mm. um, like that, that, but yet, you know, we're unsocialized. Well, no, we just, we don't live in a cave. We get yeah. out, you know, <laughs> but oh, it's so true. Um, yeah. Well, you know, as we've got about 10 minutes left and I definitely want you to share about oh, some yeah. other things. Um sure. With our audience, but, um, you know, if you were to, to just give, um, The most important thing that you want Mm -hmm. families to know that if they're homeschooling amidst medical issues, you know, with like spouse, Mm -hmm. themselves, their their children, um, what would you want them to know? What's the most important thing you want them to know and why? Um, Take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. 
take care of yourself. I, I used to think uh, my doctor even thought I had um, RA, mm. rheumatoid arthritis. And I was, I had very bad days, as you know. Mm -hmm. um, joints would hurt all the time. I was fatigued. And basically, it, I found a um, rheumatologist that would actually listen to me. And mm -hmm. it turns out I do not have RA. Really? I had, um, my vitamin D level had bottomed out mm -hmm. and I was not taking mm -hmm. care of myself. You cannot pour from an empty cup. Yeah. So if once I started taking these vitamin D tablets, like the 50,000 milligram of weekly mm -hmm. vitamin D, but mm -hmm. I had to take them twice a week. Yeah. Um, still do. But ever since then, or it's been like two months now, and I have seen a drastic improvement. Mm. My joints don't hurt anymore. I have um, energy. Mm. I can um, get in the floor with minimal assistance. <laughs> and do something. That's a great thing. <laughs> yeah, and I can walk around the neighborhood and not feel bad. Mm. So, but oh, you have to, Lord. absolutely, yeah. but you have to take care of yourself to mm -hmm. take care of your family who has medical needs. So yes. oftentimes we, we neglect ourselves mm -hmm. um, because we just don't have time to mm -hmm. take care of ourselves, but we have to. Right. Yeah. Um, it's a staggering rate of parents, absolutely. especially mothers especially who have mothers. chronic illnesses. And, mm -hmm. and if they are diagnosed with something fatal will pass because yes. we haven't taken care of ourselves. I mean, I, as Terry knows, I battled breast cancer a mm -hmm. year and a half ago and yeah, I wasn't taking care of myself. I admit it. And, um, you just don't want to find yourself in that place. No, to do. Yeah. not at all. Yeah. Great advice. Yes. And it's just, it's simple. It's simple things like diet and walking and, yeah. and just paying attention, going to Drinking see water, drink water. Yes. <laughs> Breathing yeah. deeply. <laughs> Breathing deeply. Yeah. I've discovered that it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's the little things that you can do. Um, yeah. You know, get yourself a quart mason jar. You don't have to buy the, you know, I have this, I found this water thing that mm -hmm. has times on it. Of, oh, yes. But yep. you can get a quart mason jar and like fill it up twice in one day. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, two quarts. That's half a gallon of that's water. That's half a gallon. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, and four times is a whole gallon. So mm -hmm. that's good. I mean, every right. any, if you can have it measured instead of using a glass you don't know how much you drank. Right. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I fill them up in the morning, you know, and I, I mm -hmm. just kind of pour from them into my cup because I don't like drinking out of them. But yeah, whatever works. <laughs> whatever works. <It's> <laughs> when I'm at the gym, I, I drink out of the big one. But yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, well, that's great advice. Um, so you have something exciting coming up, and I'd love yes. for you to talk about it. Um, Terry is going to be hosting another, well, I'll let you, you okay. share about it. <laughs> well, in, in 2020, I had the first um, homeschooling special needs online conference, and it was mm -hmm. huge success. Um, and I'm creating and developing the second homeschooling yeah. special needs online conference, and it's launching May 21st. Um, awesome. Peggy is going to be a speaker and Sped Homeschool yeah. is the um, sponsor of it. And I'm just thrilled about that. But um, so far we have about six speakers lined up, seven, awesome. seven, eight, counting me. So eight speakers, <laughs> <laughs> count me. But um, eight It's increasing speakers. as we talk. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but um, we have eight speakers lined up so far with... Um, right at 20 sessions awesome. um, and I'm working on getting some heavy hitter keynotes. So um, mm. yeah, so it's, um, it's going to be great. It's going to be powerful. The focus this time is more on the science and advocacy mm. of special awesome. needs as it, as it relates to homeschooling hmm. um, mm -hmm. and therapies as well. Um, so good. Yeah. So it's a, heavy on therapies this time, which I'm, I'm thrilled about. 
Mm-hmm. But it's it's not just um, autism or ADHD. It's mm-hmm. dyslexia. It's Downs. It's you know whatever. Great. It's a medical, um, mm-hmm. medical chronic diseases and stuff like that. When you're homeschooling a child with that mm-hmm. disorder, so yeah. um, you can find out more information about that at um, homeschooling one child with the number one. There you go. Mm-hmm. Um, homeschooling one child dot com. And just click on courses at the top, and it's the first one that pops up. Awesome. So, and the registration page for that will be coming up soon. Okay. Um, I just have to make it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In the midst of your busyness. <laughs> She's actually writing a book this week. So, yes. yes. Here, so, in preparation to speak and teach them diligently in Texas and Tennessee. So, very um, cool. Lots of good things going on. Yeah, yeah. And you have more information on Homeschooling One Child. Again, that website is homeschooling with the number one child.com. If you're listening on the podcast and trying to to visualize that, that's how I remember things. But, um, but yeah, that um, would be great. So, well, thank you for sharing your story, Terry. I know it's hard sometimes, but it also is healing to to do that. And the more I share it, you know, the, the more healed I get from it so yeah yeah but the Lord has been very good and mm. he, he's taught us so much about himself through all this mm. all these things and yeah which is which has been a huge blessing right yeah. yeah it's it's how you you look at it how you move forward in it and um and yeah, yeah take what you learn and and share with others and to give them That's hope right. and and Absolutely. you have shared hopes some hope today. And so thank you for doing that with our audience. I I greatly appreciate that. So, um, so yeah, we, we appreciate that. And for kicking off our, our theme this month of homeschooling amidst medical issues, because um, yeah, we're going to dive into some things. I'm actually still looking for a guest um, for later this month. So who knows, (laughs) you may just get me for the hour. Um, We'll we'll see, but (laughs) But yeah, we um, we're, we just want to thank our audience for also joining us on this episode of Empowering Homeschool Conversations. Absolutely. You know, this is just one of the many resources we at Sped Homeschool make available to families. We actually have the number one special needs homeschooling blog out there. Um, and our YouTube channel, if you're watching on YouTube, I think we're close to, oh, we're, we're almost to 900 videos and I think we've almost got 2,100 subscribers now. So, um, mm-hmm. so we... We love our audience there. We love when you make comments and and share our videos. Um, just do a search, you know, in the search bar because there's so many of, we take these long videos like this interview with Terry and next week you'll see four shorter segments of this same, um, the same interview with just little snippets that um, if you didn't watch the whole thing, you're kind of catching us at the end. Maybe you want to catch a little bit and say, oh, what else do I have to learn? And I, maybe I don't have the full hour. Then just watch a three to five minute video. So um, <laughs> that'll encourage you. So, so yeah, but um, anyways, and yeah, dig into to Terry's website, um, Homeschooling One Child. She has a lot of wisdom, more than she's shared in this hour to, to share with you. And, um, and I'm excited for your book to come out. So, I am too. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure you are. Why did I write it? <laughs> yes, yes. That's uh, I. What God does this week? <laughs> yes, I wrote one book, and I I don't know if I can go through that process again ever. <laughs> but um, but yeah. So next week um, we're going to be talking about this. Um, the same topic and Stephanie um, Buckwalter will be with me if she's been on before, but she's going to talk about home educating a student with an intellectual disability. Mm-hmm. And um, she has personal experience with that as well as works with other families who homeschool children um, who have lots of delays. And so we're going to talk about, you know, what does that look like and how do we navigate those waters? So, um, so that's what we're going to be talking about next week. So we'll be right here, same time, same place. And, um, and thanks again, Terry, just appreciate you and, and all that you do and keep up the good work. So, and thanks everybody. Um, you've been quiet today, but we've loved that you've been watching and, um, and we'll catch you next week right here on Empowering Homeschool Conversations. We'll see you then. Bye, everybody. Bye.
Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for working everything out for my good. Help me trust in your perfect plan. Amen. Father, thank you for loving and caring for me. With Christian prayer meditation, you can pray along to prayers based on specific topics. Go to lifeaudio.com or search your favorite podcast app for Christian prayer meditation. You can also download the Abide app for biblical meditations at abide.com.